everyone, my name is Ebola and welcome to another episode of Stories of Pixels and Codes. In the last episode we talked about actually Sea of Stars, you can see the, at the here I think, yeah, the, exactly here. But uh, before everything, I really appreciate if you like the video and hit that subscribe button and sit back and enjoy the video. But before we start the video, I want to, you know, go tell the brief story of that in a few seconds. Actually, we are talking about 23 Best Debot Indie Game Award winner, Cocoon. That is actually a third-person adventure puzzle game directed by Jeff Clarkson, who previously designed Limbo and Insight in Play Dead. And actually, the story of the creation of Cocoon begins in 2016, after actually Jeff Clarkson leave the Play Dead for good. Cocoon, the player wakes up in a barren wasteland, soon after discovering a mysterious orb. Each orb contains one of the game's world, allowing the player to hop between them, while also doubling as a unique ability in itself. The orb can also be used to power the various machinery found in this desolated world, such as lifts and platforms. As a player reaches the end of each orb, they are confronted by a boss fight they must complete by using a mechanic to impede the creature. So let's dive to the story. The, the original story begins many years ago. No, I just lying. It begins at 2016. Then Jeff Clarkson and Jacob Schmidt left uh, played it to create their own game. I feel as free as a cuckoo. Yeah! All right, the great Gonzo. Thank you, Gonzo. And now to the task at hand. The game award goes to Cocoon. After the release of Inside, the aim was to start a small. While working on the game, the pair had collaborated on a minimalist platformer called 140, which left them pining for another project on the modest scale. And what could be smaller than Clarkson's next idea, in which vaults are so tiny you can carry them around? Well, most things it turned out. Most from minuscule seeds of inspiration grew a game that took six and a half years, longer than the development period of time of Inside itself. The concept that Cocoon's heart that these portable worlds would open up to reveal landscapes with puzzles that require you to nest globes inside and one another, like Russian dolls, wasn't one that Clarkson jumped on immediately. But each time he put the idea aside, it would resurface in his mind, in his mind, and he'd, and he'd flesh it out more. What if he wondered? It wasn't a character that gains new abilities, but the orb worlds themselves. After months of such a musing, he and Schmidt decided the potential was too rich to ignore, and they found it geometric interact. If the concept was reasonably clear by this point, visualizing it was a different matter. I didn't dare to fantasize a full 3D game like this, Clarkson says, but he thought a, a 2D Zelda-like perspective could do it justice. Top down gives the feeling of you jumping, leaping into a wall, landing and having freedom like a 3D game. He also wanted a change after Limbo and Inside. I was like, I'm not doing another left to right kind of game. Yet for a time, Shimid, whose responsibilities on the game ranged from programming to audio direction, was in the dark. When Jeb was describing the game, I didn't see anything close to the what that we ended up with, he said. I saw it in a first person view. It was only when Clarkson made the prototype that the smoke clear. It was like Oh, there's a little guy, and you're moving around. Okay, now it makes sense to me. Built from a simple shapes, this prototype left the game's visual style yet to be nailed down. Clarkson and Schmidt began approaching artists, including Erwin Ho, who would take charge of crafting Cocoon's location and life forms. While Ho had contributed to games before, he'd mainly work as a freelance digital artist and a series of images called Islands. 
attracted Clarkson's and Shemid's attention. They sent me a demo to get a feel for it, and then said, OK, but you will get to design everything, who recalls. I was like, I had no idea what I'm getting into. Yet on the strength of prototype, along with the qualities of Limbo and inside, he wasn't about to pass up the offer. Carlson confirms he had no particular style in the mind when Ko began. Did we describe what we wanted from Irving? He smiles. The answer is not at all. It hadn't even been decided at this point that the game would have a sci-fi setting. And this open approach to design is emblematic of the way Cocoon involved. It's just not from that angle of planning everything that I design games. Carson's continues, I think my role is more to just look at the things being made and try to listen to what the game wants to become. The only theme he insisted on was that the orbs, not the player's character, should feel like the focal point of the game. Yet it was that character that led Holt from his first concepts, more ag angular in style, to the game's biomechanoid look. The protagonist was originally a kind of astronaut with a cape, but it was noted that the cape made them look insectoid. And who ran with that idea? I remember having conversations with Jeb about making the character more likable. He says the helmet had this golden visor and made it impersonal. He pushed the insect's likeness further, adding eyes, ears and antennas. It made the character cuter and more accessible. This new direction affected the world Ho had in mind in terms of their technology and culture. He leaned towards art deco designs and incorporated patterns from insects, plants and marine life. The wings of cicada for instance have these beautiful dark veins on the transparent surface. That shape language comes back in many designs in the game. Kuhn's magnificent multi-part doors Meanwhile, we're inspired by iridescent, iridescent beetle shells and their interlocking sections of the insect many balls. They're like puzzle piece, but organic. Indeed, Cocoon's environments are almost as puzzling as what you do within them. Blending earthly landscapes with alien fauna and technology, the first rocky area. Reminiscent of the Grand Canyon contains hints of alien hand. Ho explains and he wanted to create an ambiguity around what was natural and what was built by intelligent life. He was also guided by human engineering that blurs the line between natural and artificial, including the city carved in rock in Petra, Jordan. Perhaps the most extraordinary aesthetic achievement in Cocoon, however, is distinct feel of each world. With materials from plastics to squinchy flesh somehow conveying tactility, Carlson's name checks, lightning, and rendering programmer Michael Stenson here for his work in bringing out the texture of Ho's art. But another crucial element was sound design. Overseen by Schmidt, Cocoon's sound effects are entirely synthesized, with no recorded sound used at all, something Schmidt chose in order to echo in the game's synthesized score. But when his experiments had an eerie, an eerie artificial quality, he put out a call for sound designers and found Lucas Julian Lenz. His work had something that my sound didn't, Schmidt says. The tactility, the texture and all that. It fits with an Irving's art style because it's also artificial in a way. As for the music, Schmidt wanted it to change in real time during play so the player could have thinking breaks without the music looping. This was important to Schmidt who admits to being very annoyed by loops in video games music. He thus created mastering method to combine pre-recorded and generated music so it adapts to your situation or your position as if it were an ambient sound. Despite the effort, 
though he's not sure it's appreciated. It's quite subtle, he says. It's mostly only me who notices it. Carlsen, meanwhile, was crafting puzzles and Cocoon transformed like a caterpillar in a chrysalis. New species of brain teaser spread their wings, not least that he calls suitcase puzzles, where you stash a vault inside another to carry it across an obstacle. Given how central they became to the experience, it's surprising to learn that they didn't feature from the beginning. It became clear that I can do these interesting puzzles, a challenge the way people think about traversing a vault in a video game. Clarkson says in an early test, though it become equally clear that some players struggled to wrap their heads around these demands. From the get-go, I was like, this is probably the most complex game idea I have ever worked on. It was important, then, to find ways of compensating for this complexity. One was to keep the control system simple, pared down from an initial two-button setup to that all interactions are triggered by a single button. That meant losing some versatility originally. The orb that allows you to shoot projectiles and switches Projectiles at switches could be fired anywhere, but people had a really hard time playing it with two buttons, Clarkson says. Actions were divided into picking up and putting down an orb, an orb versus activating switches and the, like, the test players kept confusing the two. You should never have interact button and another type of interact button is the moral of Clarkson's story, it needs to be more distinct than that. Further alternations were still to come, such as the bosses, which hadn't featured in the early plans. Sections originally ended with you activating core, but there was very little to it. Boss battles conversely provided the pleasing change of, p of pace from the lack of urgency or threat elsewhere. Once they were installed, Clarkson says, we also started getting ideas for what these creatures could represent in the real story. So, this story wasn't planned before either. Of course not. Violet mechanics inspired the story, not the other way around. Mainly, the narrative was inspired by art, he says, a process that involved looking at Ho's design and as asking, what could this be? In short, Cocoon is an amalgam of Clarkson's and Shimid's computer science mentality and Ho's design artistic eye. Clarkson believes, yet whatever magic emerged, it took a long while to spark into life. I was promised one year and I got six and a half whole jobs. Having left Play Dead with the intent to make games quicker than we used to, Shimid reflects, we ended up not doing that. One reason, Carson explains, is that it took time to find the right structure for the game. Building puzzles was one thing, switching them together across vaults was a difficult pound round. I think it's because there's nothing that just gives you answers from all the games you've played, Clarkson says, because this is authentically new. The eventual breakthrough was a matter of finding the right pacing first working through a string of puzzles in the one vault, then solving a problem across a multiplayer vault, then meeting a boss. Entry to a boss would also require you to gather them later, and once you completed the loop, you'd earn new ability, however. The true reward from beating a boss is that the game becomes linear for a while, Clarkson says, simplifying your progress before the next round of multiversal mind-bending. The team hit another sticking point about a year into development, when they produced a vertical slice of the game and found that it felt a little well, boring. You have to be careful in this situation, Clarkson says, that you don't panic and add guns to the game or something because you are afraid people are under-simulated Rather, the situation was to change the way you interact with the vault, beyond picking up the orbs and pushing buttons because you can't even jump or swing a sword. 
it forced us to make sure every single scene introduces something stimulating. The turning point here was the invention of fathered orbs, metallic spheres attached to elastic tendons that can be yanked around the varying effect. Now activities such as pulling a container felt more involving. There's no gameplay there other than picking up an orb and dragging it. Clarkson notes. But it feels great. It feels like you are connected into these worlds. These fathered orbs in turn inspired Hull to add further detail, such as giving said container little insect legs that sprout when it moves. Having this orb attached to the environment that you'd be able to manipulate really push the idea of this weird alien culture even further, he says. If there's a way to sum up where those six and a half years went, then perhaps it's in a meeting of minds, with the exception of the two played that veterans who began the project hadn't met before and who'd shine more brightly the more time they spent feeding off each other's idea. The result is speak for itself, logic and artistry intertwining cocoon, joining the familiar and then alien into a smooth, coherent, spherical whole. Sometimes Clarkson says it just takes a lot of time to really sync up your thinking. Yeah, I really agree with this last sentence at least that we see in the actually we saw it at Stardew Valley in the first episode of the series because I really love the Stardew Valley. That's the first episode you can see. Actually, you can go and watch this. The time and effort actually will pay off. You know, actually, with all the stories I just told you, the game actually blast the game awards of 2023 and you know that's how hard work will pay off actually because i'm actually a boring character probably for you i won't talk too much for that ending of this episode i really appreciate if you go and watch other videos of this series and really comment your idea and if you enjoyed like the video and hit the subscribe button i will honest here